we were having trouble just getting in the door, and finally, uh, uh, one of our agents uh, said, "Okay, why don't why don't we just why don't we just do this? Why don't you pick one show that you really really like, and instead of turning out a lot of stuff, trying to turn out a lot of scripts, um, and doing the buckshot approach, why don't we just be very surgical?" We'll pick a show that we think you have a chance of getting on. We'll pick a show that's well respected. Pick a show that you like, um, and that you think you can do well. And spend as much time as you possibly can uh, writing the best spec script you possibly can. And um, so we chose uh, Barney Miller, and Peter took I think three or four months to construct this Barney Miller script. And what was done, we were really happy with it, and the agent sent it out, and we immediately got called in uh, by Rhoda. And uh, we went in very excited for our first pitch session. We had our story ideas, and and it was we thought, oh boy, you know, the foot literally the foot was in the door, and uh, uh, we went in, had our pitch session. They weren't sure about any of the ideas, but they wanted us to think of some more and come back, and. Uh, while we were thinking of our ideas, Rhoda got canceled. <laughs> but that same day, uh, our agent called and said, they're interested in seeing you over at the Jeffersons. And uh, so the Jeffersons, you know, that's you know, where these two white bread guys, what, why would they be interested in us? Said, well, they liked, they liked your Barney Miller. Um, Barney Miller didn't like our Barney Miller, by the way, so. Um, so that was out. Um, but again, cutting to later, you find out that often, often shows don't, they're much more critical of spec scripts of their own show, so they tend not to like them as much as they would reading a spec script of another show. Um, so anyway, uh, we were called into the Jeffersons for a pitch session, and we pitched ideas, and they liked one of them, and, and we, we sold, sold our first idea. I, I remember it was the same week as the Guiana massacre and the assassination of Harvey Milk, and we sold our first script. So it was um, it was sort of a little bit of gold amongst a lot of flaws. But uh, what was that script about? Florence the maid. Florence the maid fell in love with a guy who was really religious, and it was right up her alley because she was a religious person too. And then the religion thing started into the, I'm the man, you'll obey me. This is, I barely remember this. That was sort of the, the gist of it, and she then told them to get lost. I remember the guy who played her love interest was a local LA newscaster. Do you recall <laughs> the script changing through the process of that week's taping? Yeah, well, of course, that was a point where we weren't on staff, so I wasn't privy to all that. So w we basically turned in our first draft, our outline, got notes, turned in a first draft, got notes, turned in a second draft, got notes, and then and then it was, a, a script was delivered to our door the day of the filming that we were going to see that night. And it was, it was an education. I would say half of our stuff was still in, uh, which we thought was just a disaster. You know, we thought they hated it. Again, cut for <laughs> when you realize that that that's really good if if you still have half your stuff in. So, um, so we went to went to the taping, and it was a taping. It wasn't a filming. They did it on tape, and uh, it was quite a heady evening. And I I thought, boy, I'm on my way, and uh, uh, and then I wasn't. <laughs> Why not? Um, because that was one assignment. I thought, okay, there's enough money there that I don't have to deliver sandwiches anymore because I didn't get the classy studio route. I got the Beverly Hills office route. Now, you may think that that's a classy route, but it's, it's, um, it, it was, you're delivering sandwiches, <laughs> you know? And uh, so anyway, I stopped doing it for a while and because I thought, oh, I can get by with what I, what I earned on that script until the next one starts. And, and then, of course, it was the end of the Jefferson season, and months went by, and they hadn't decided what they were going to do for the next season. And, and uh, I remember the, it being the low point of my life that I had to go back to working for Movable Feast, doing my sandwich route. And one of the things that they would do um, uh, 
if you wanted to supplement your income is when they had a, a catering event, they would hire you as a cater waiter. And uh, so there was the opening of the Neiman Marcus at the Newport Beach Fashion Plaza or whatever it was called. And uh, n the company was catering that. So I said, well, I'll drive down and earn some extra money. And I got assigned to be the restroom attendant. <laughs> And I went, boy, they can't write a better nader than this. <laughs> so they're handing out towels in the men's room. Very near the time when my first TV episode was airing. 